To build this app, I'm going to use Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition, but you can use any version of Visual Studio 2022 or later. In here, the first thing that I need to do is that I need to create an empty project. For that, I'll just go to File, New, Project, and then from the templates in here, I'll search for MVC. In here, I'll select the option that I get in here, which is the ASP.NET Core Web App Model View Controller. And I'll make sure that I select the one that has the C Sharp as a programming language. Then click the Next button. I'll name this project the Translate GPT. And then I'll leave the solution name to be the same. I'm going to also select a project location. For that, I'll just go to the C drive. And I just create a folder in here, app, select folder, and then click the next button. From the framework option that I get in here, I'll select the .NET 6 because that is currently in long-term support, but you can select .NET 7, or if you have installed the preview versions of .NET 8, you can also select .NET 8 because the steps are going to be the same. I'll not have authentication, so I'll leave it as none. I'll configure for HTTPS and then I'll just click the create button. Now that the app is created, what I'll do is that I'll just close the overview. Then in here, I'll just go to the solution explorer. And then in the solution explorer, you'll see that I have the MVC app in the controllers. I have the home controller in the models. I have the air view model on the views. I have the home folder where you have the index and privacy. Then you have the shared folder where you have the layout.c-sharp HTML. And then down here, you have the app settings.json file and program.cs. I'm going to open the app settings.json file because in this file, I'm going to store the OpenAI API key. So for that, I'll just create a new section. I'll name it OpenAI. And then down here, I'll create or I'll define a property named API key. And the value of the API key is going to be the value that I got from the OpenAI profile settings where I created the API key secret. And this is the value. So I'll just paste a value in here. And then I'll just add a comma. Next, on the solution explorer, I'll just go to the program.cs. And in here, just before the build, I'm going to configure the HTTP client. So I'm going to add the HTTP client. Now to call the OpenAI, you can either use the HTTP client to just directly call the API, or you can use one of the .NET packages that are currently available in the NuGet package manager store, but none of these packages is the official one. So I've decided to just use their API directly using the HTTP client. For that, I'll just type in here builder.services and then add HTTP client. And this is all you need to do in program.cs. So I'll just close the program.cs and now here I'll just go to the solution explorer and then go to the home controller. Now in the home controller, I'm going to create a private read only, it's going to be a read only read only list of strings. I'm going to name this list the most used languages. Even though the GPT-4 model does support all the languages, I'm just going to use some of the commonly used languages because I don't want to have a super long drop down where you can select any language you want. And in here, I'll start with English and then I'm just going to paste the rest of the languages. And then I'm just going to collapse this list. So I have more coding space. And if I scroll down in here, you can see that I have multiple actions. So I'll just remove the privacy one. I don't need the error one, or if you want to just leave the error one. And then in here, we need to create another one that is going to take two parameters. So for that, I'll just type in here HTTP post. And then in here, public async, I'll make this async task. I action result. And then let's just name this get GPT response. 
we said this takes two parameters, the first one the string query, and the second parameter, let's say, is string selected language. Now inside here, the first thing that we need to do is that we need to just get the open AI key from app settings json file then we need to create the http client set up the http client with open ai key and then next we need to construct or define the request payload and then at the end we're just going to process or we're just going to send the request and the last step is to just return a response. In the first step, to get the value from the app settings.json file, we need to inject the I configuration. So in here, I'll just go and type private read only I configuration. So configuration and then just underscore configuration. And then we need to inject this one in the on controller constructor and just assign the configuration value to the underscore configuration. To get the value, just in here, I'll type var open API key is equal to, this is going to be the configuration when the key and the key in our case is the open AI. And then within the open AI, we have the API key. So if I just go in here, I'll copy this value and then paste it in here. Now, the next step is to just configure the HTTP client to use this OpenAI key so it's authenticated whenever it requests any data from the OpenAI. For that, in the program.cs, so if you go to program.cs, we did set up the HTTP client. Now what we need to do is that we need to set up this HTTP client in the home controller. For that, I'll just go to the home controller. And then in here, I'll type private read only. Then I HTTP client, phrase, 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 and then HTTP client. Let's inject the HTTP client down here. So we have the HTTP client. And then if I scroll down in here, when we set up the HTTP client, what we need to do is underscore HTTP client dot default headers. So default request headers dot add. We want to add the authorization header. So authorization. And then the value needs to be, so I'll just use the dollar sign in here for string interpolation. It's going to be bearer and then the open API key value. Now, this is all you need to do to just set up the HTTP client. Next, of course, you need to define the payload that we'll send using the HTTP client to the open AI. And then we're going to handle the other steps, which is to just send a request and then return a response.